so today in this chapter of hydrogen we are going to discuss about water a major part of all living organism it is made up of water even the human body has about 65% of water present in it even the plants they have 95% of water present in them even the fruits they contain 95 to 99% of water right so this is the importance of water with us then now we talk about the structure of the water molecule what do we know about the structure of water molecule we know water formula is H2O so one molecule of water contains two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen and they are always found in a they always form a bell structure with an angle of 104 degree 5 prime and uh, the bond length of each oxygen and hydrogen it is uh, 95.7 pm right and what did i tell you the angle between hydrogen oxygen and hydrogen is how much 104 degree 5 prime right now we also know that water it uh, has a polar nature right the what do we understand by this word polar nature that it has both the charges present on it that is slight positive charge is found on hydrogen and slight negative charge is found where at oxygen so the oxygen atom is more electronegative and it has a stronger attraction for electrons as compared to the hydrogen atoms therefore the shared pair of electrons between oxygen and hydrogen atoms of this OH bond in this water it shifts more towards oxygen atom as a result of this shifting of electrons the hydrogen atom it acquires a partial positive charge over here and the oxygen atom it acquires a negative charge thus what do we see over here the polarity is developed in both oxygen as well as hydrogen thus forming a molecule of water right so the two OH bonds right in the water they have the polar nature and this water molecule thus is said to be highly polar in nature highly polar in nature i hope this is clear now next we are going to talk about h2o molecules in water so in liquid state what am i talking about in the liquid state the h2o molecules they are held together by hydrogen bonds okay and this can be explained like a molecule of water consists of two hydrogen atoms they are bonded by an electronegative at oxygen atom now there are two lone pairs of electrons where on the oxygen atom of water thus there are four sites of uh, hydrogen suited for the hydrogen bonding over here these sites are two hydrogen atoms with the positive charge and two pairs of electrons on the oxygen atom you can see it like this so this is h o as i told you it has two lone pairs h then this is attached to another oxygen hydrogen is attached to oxygen okay uh, then let me draw it more So this is the hydrogen bonding that we find 
between hydrogen and oxygen in the liquid water clear so what do we see over here that each of the hydrogen atom of hoh hoh or hoh whatever you see over here they form hydrogen bonds with the lone pair of electrons okay on the oxygen atom of two different water molecules again the two lone pairs of electrons of oxygen of the atom of that same hoh they form two more hydrogen bonds with the other two water molecules and in this way a water molecule a complete figure like this will be formed of hydrogen bonds with each other thus forming how many four water molecules at a time okay so uh this type of hydrogen bonding it extends throughout in the liquid state of water right next we talk about the hydrogen bonding in ice bonding in ice so in ice there is maximum possibility of the formation of hydrogen bonds between water molecules right so under normal atmospheric pressure ice has a hexagonal crystalline structure you can see it in the figure over here in this type of crystal structure oxygen atom of each each hydrogen it is surrounded by four oxygen atoms of other four uh, water molecules and there is one hydrogen atom right in between each pair of oxygen atoms look over here look at the figure and this leads to an open crystal structure of ice so hydrogen in hydrogen bonding in ice what do we see open crystal structure of ice is seen over here in the crystal structure of ice the separation between the two oxygen atoms right uh, separation between a uh, two adjacent oxygen atoms is if you look in the figure it is 276 picometer and the hydrogen atoms the bond length of hydrogen bond is 177 Pm. Okay, so this is the reason why they show open cage structure. You can say or open crystal structure of ice can be seen over here. Now let us compare the hydrogen bonding in water and in ice. I have already shown you the water. Ice is over here. So in liquid state of water, there is hydrogen bonding uh, aggregation of various number of water molecules and there are free water molecules also that is what i said there is a, a dynamic equilibrium between hydrogen bonded water molecules and free water molecules in the liquid state okay but in the solid state that is in the ice form the water molecule is evolved in hydrogen bonding and there is no free uh, water molecule in this crystal of ice thus the possibility of hydrogen bonding between water molecule is maximum where in the solid state of water clear now what is the reason for this open space in the crystal lattice of ice Now, if you see there, there is maximum possibility of formation of hydrogen bonds between the water molecules. Now, the bond length of hydrogen bond is large as compared to the covalent bonds, and therefore the distance between the molecules is larger over here. And this results, or this leads to the packing of the larger open spaces in uh, in the crystal lattice of the ice okay next we are going to talk about aaram se nikol kya sakte the now let us talk about the physical 
properties of water. We already know that pure water is colorless, odorless, transparent, tasteless liquid, right? But we enjoy some taste of water. Why? Because of the presence of dissolved particles. The air is present in it, uh, particularly or carbon dioxide is present in it. So water is, uh, it imparts taste because of the soluble gases as well as the salts present in it. Water also exists in the solid, liquid or in the gaseous state under different conditions. Now, what is the effect of cooling on the state of water? On cooling, all this you already know. Uh, quickly, I'll just uh, go through so that you just recollect all physical properties. Okay. So, if you remember, on cooling, the water changes into ice at 0 degree Celsius and this temperature, what is it called as? The freezing point of water, right? Then uh, some more characteristic properties of water. What is the molar mass? The molar mass of water, it is 18 grams per mole. Let me write down this also over here. It is a colorless, odorless, tasteless liquid okay then we have we know that molar mass of water is 18 grams per mole then what about the melting point of ice melting point of ice will always be equal to the freezing point of of water okay and all this is equal to what zero degree celsius which can be also 273 Kelvin. Then what do we know about the boiling point of water? Boiling point of water is equal to 100 degree Celsius. We can also say it is 373 Kelvin at 1 atmosphere. Okay. Then it has high enthalpy. So, what is the enthalpy of vaporization of water? This is equal to uh, 40.66 kilojoules per mole. Okay. Then uh, we also should be knowing the enthalpy of fusion of ice which is equal to 6.01 kilojoules per mole then the specific heat capacity of water it is equal to 4.18 kilo sorry 18 joules per kg gram okay so these are some of the uh, physical properties of uh, water. Now, let us talk about the chemical properties. We will talk about chemical properties of water. So, starting with the first point that is its neutral nature of water. So, what do we understand by the neutral nature of water? We say that water is a neutral compound. Why? Because it gives equal number of hydrogen ions as well as hydroxyl ions when it ionizes. Okay. And this is also termed as what? Autoprotolysis. So the ionization of water into hydrogen ion is always proton and hydroxide ion will be your OH negative. So we can say H2O on uh, decomposition gives H ion plus OH minus. Is this point clear? So, uh, the value of ionic product of water is what? It is called as Kw and what is its value? It is, uh, this Kw is equal to the, uh, the hydroxyl ion into the OH minus. Remember? So, this was equal to 1 uh, point uh, zero zero into ten to the power minus 
14 is the value of it and this happens at 298 Kelvin. So the value of ionic product of water is what? 1 into 10 to the power minus 14. If you remember 1 into 10 to the power minus 7, 1 into 10 to the power minus 7 gives us 10 to the power minus 14. Okay. Then second point. This is also what do we call it as? Auto proto lessons. Next point we talk about the amphoteric nature of water. Now what do we know about amphoteric nature? That it exhibits both uh, acidic and basic property. So water it acts as a base in the presence of acid which is stronger acid than the water. Right? For example, let's talk about HCl when combines with water. Right? So over here, when this we are using HCl, which is more acidic than water. So this is an acid, this becomes your base. And this will form what? It will form if it is acidic, then it is going to form a hydronium ion, and then a chlorine base will be formed. Right? Then Water, as I said, here it is acting like a base. Now, I am going to show you one reaction where it is going to act like an acid. So, let's take NH3 and treat it with water. So, NH3 is a base, more stronger base than water. So, now when ammonia is a base, then water is what? Over here, it acts as an acid. Okay? And thus, it gives us ammonium ion plus the hydroxyl ion. So what did we understand over here? That water it acts as a base in the presence of acid and it behaves as an acid in the presence of uh, a base and therefore we can say that water is also amphoteric in nature. I hope this much is very clear. Next let us talk about the Redox reactions. Redox reactions means what? That reduction and oxidation taking place simultaneously. So when electric current is passed through water, what do we observe? We see the redox reaction taking place over there. So uh, you can remember this reaction H2O will give us oxygen as a gas plus it is going to give what? Four hydrogen ions where oxidation will take place at anode okay and uh, similarly this water it is going to accept two electrons and it is going to form the OH ion two OH ions will be formed if I use two molecules of water and hydrogen gas will be given out and this takes place where this is a reduction taking place at cathode. Clear? So this reaction shows your redox reaction. Even when fluorine is passed through water, it shows redox reaction. That is F2 plus H2O. It forms HF plus O2. Over here again you will observe redox reaction. Let's take one more example where water combines with sodium. So it is going to form sodium hydroxide plus hydrogen gas. So in these reactions you can see the redox reaction taking place. The next reaction, the fourth will be uh, some examples of hydrolysis or uh, hydrolysis reactions. Okay, so over here like uh, water it always causes hydrolysis of certain compounds. Let's take for example like uh, P4O10 when reacts with water. So let's start balancing also. This is going to give you four molecules of phosphoric acid. Similarly aluminium carbide when treated with 12 molecules of water it is going to give you four molecules of aluminium 
hydroxide plus uh, methane so methane three molecules of methane similarly calcium carbide when it is treated with water it is forming calcium hydroxide plus ethene will be formed even magnesium nitride when treated with six molecules of water forms three molecules of magnesium hydroxide and two molecules of ammonia so what do all these reactions they show they show us hydrolysis reactions okay then we also know that water forms hydrates for example uh, let me write down is this some uh, hydrates formation so some of the examples could be like cuso4.5 h2o so what do we call this copper to sulfate pentahydrate this is a hydrate of how many molecules five molecules of water they are linked over here so how are these five water molecules linked with copper sulfate so remember the four water molecules they are linked with copper by a coordinate bond while fifth one is the hydrogen bonded to the sulfate ion clear some more examples could be like bacl2 dot 2h2o so over here this barium chloride um, uh, dihydrate okay so in this hydrate water molecules they occupy the interstitial sites in the crystal structure another example could be like uh, nickel nitrate dot 6h2o so this nickel nitrate hexahydrate in which the hydrate water molecules they are linked to the nickel ion by a coordinate bond right next let us talk about action of water on metals okay so you already know that uh, when the metals like uh, calcium uh, metals like potassium sodium calcium when they are dropped in the trough filled with water of different temperature the reaction is always exothermic in nature and hydrogen gas is given out so for example i'm showing you a moderate reaction where calcium is dropped in uh, the trough filled with cold water and it forms calcium hydroxide the alkalis are formed and hydrogen gas is given out the react remember that potassium is shows a um, explosive reaction sodium does not show explosive reaction it is violent and vigorous calcium shows moderate reaction right and uh, all the reactions from magnesium onwards they show slow reaction so we can say that as we go down the activity series the uh, reactivity of the metal it keeps on decreasing with respect to the metals then we come to the seventh point that is the reaction of water on the metal oxides on metal oxides or metallic oxides for example the oxides of say sodium oxide or magnesium oxide or calcium oxide they interact with water and hence they form the hydroxides which are basic in nature so i give you one example like na2o it will combine with water and what is it going to form naoh so what is this this is a uh, this is an alkali right which is basic in nature then uh, the last reaction reaction of uh, the water on non metallic oxides so you know that they always form acid with the non metallic oxides okay like for example carbon dioxide plus h2o what is it going to form it is going to form a um, carbonic acid similarly Uh, your N two O five when reacts with water, what is it going to form? It is going to form H N O three. So on uh, when non metallic oxides they are added to water, they form their respective acids.
so with this we finish off with the part of water next time we are going to do hard water soft water and also discuss about heavy water thank you